The topic of today's video is the blue bottle demonstration. It's a pretty cool demonstration where we start with a colorless solution and when we shake it, it turns blue. If we then leave it somewhere undisturbed, the blue color will disappear and we'll be back with a colorless solution. We're going to first prepare the demonstration and then we're going to talk about how it works. In terms of supplies, I use 10 milliliters of dextrose, 16 grams of potassium hydroxide, 250 milliliters of distilled water, and a few drops of 1% methylene blue solution. The methylene blue solution is probably the most exotic thing here, but it was easily purchased from my local pharmacy. I bought the potassium hydroxide from eBay, and the dextrose was from a local winemaking store. We start off by dissolving the 16 grams of potassium hydroxide in about 250 milliliters of distilled water. Using a glass stir rod, I mix things around until all of the potassium hydroxide has dissolved. Into the potassium hydroxide solution, I then pour in about 10 grams of dextrose. Again, we stir things until all of the dextrose has dissolved, and then I take out the stir rod. The potassium hydroxide and dextrose solution is then poured into a water bottle. The last thing that we need to do now is add a few drops of 1% methylene blue solution. I cap the bottle, but before shaking it I swirl it a little and you can see the methylene blue disappear. However, when I go ahead and shake the bottle, the blue color comes back. As we let the container sit here for a little bit, the blue color starts to fade and we're left with a colorless solution again. The cycle of shaking the bottle to make it turn blue and then waiting for it to revert back to colorless can be repeated several times. So this obviously isn't magic and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here. The methylene blue indicator that we're using actually has two different forms where one is colored and one is colorless. The colored form of the methylene blue is its oxidized form and its reduced form is colorless. During the preparation of this demonstration, we had colored methylene blue, which means that it was oxidized, but when we added it to the dextrose potassium hydroxide mixture, it was reduced to its colorless form. When we shake the bottle, we introduce oxygen gas into the solution, and this is able to oxidize the methylene blue back to its colored form. Once we stop shaking the bottle though, we stop introducing oxygen, and the reducing effects of the dextrose and potassium hydroxide slowly take over and convert it back to its colorless form. Although pretty much all of the solution reverts to colorless, the upper layer remains a little bit blue because it stays in contact with the air. The time that it takes for the solution to go back to colorless depends mostly on the temperature as well as the concentration of methylene blue, dextrose, and potassium hydroxide. If the temperature is increased, the molecules are going to be moving around much quicker, and for this reason the reaction rate will increase. Depending on how we play with the concentrations of the reactants, we can either speed things up or slow things down. If we increase the concentration of our reducing solution, things should speed up, but if we increase the concentration of the methylene blue, things are going to become slower. To show this, I prepared another bottle, but this time instead of using 16 grams of potassium hydroxide, I only used 4, and instead of using 10 grams of dextrose, I only used 5. With a much lower concentration of reducing solution, the conversion back to colorless takes much longer. Now to just go into a little bit more detail, I've pulled a diagram from a PDF I found online. At the top of the diagram, we see the reaction that the dextrose undergoes. An alternative name for dextrose is D-glucose, and I think they just use the term glucose here because it's easier to name the intermediates. Anyway, under the basic conditions of the potassium hydroxide, the glucose undergoes an acid-base reaction to form the glucoside anion. The glucoside anion then undergoes a two-electron oxidation to form D-gluconolactone. The terms oxidation and reduction can be a little bit confusing, 
but in very simple terms, if something is oxidized, it gives away electrons, and if something is reduced, it receives electrons. In this case, I said the glucoside anion underwent a two electron oxidation, which means it gave away two electrons. Oxidation reactions are pretty much always coupled with a reduction reaction, because for a molecule to give up electrons, we need something else to accept them. In our case here, the molecule that receives the electrons is methylene blue in its colored form. When it receives the electrons that are given up by the sugar, it becomes reduced, and the reduced form of methylene blue is colorless. I don't want to get into too much detail as to why the reduced form is colorless, but I will write a little bit of detail on the side here, and you can read it if you're interested. Methylene blue isn't the only indicator that can be used in this type of demonstration, and we can also use other redox indicators. All we really need is another indicator that changes its appearance depending on its oxidation state. On top of this, we don't need to use glucose and potassium hydroxide as our reducing solution. We can also use something else that's capable of carrying out a reduction reaction. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about the blue bottle experiment, and I'll see you guys on the next one. As usual, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, and especially those who donate $5 or more. Anyone who donates and supports me on Patreon gets to see my videos 24 hours before I release it to YouTube, and if you donate $5 or more, you get your name at the end of the video like you see here. In the next few months though, I want to work on my Patreon page a lot, and I want to get more rewards going, and maybe even get some higher tier ones, and I want to also offer some Patreon exclusive content. Also, as usual, here's the videos that I've currently filmed and the ones I plan to work on. If you have any suggestions or ideas, please feel free to leave them in the comments.